Hey class, this is a video explanation of our HK100 application paper. Make sure you're reading through the um, assignment document. I would recommend having read through the whole thing prior to watching this video. So I'm basically going to like go through everything and then explain it in detail and give you as much information as I can possibly think of to help you to write this paper as best as you possibly can. So, um, this is a paper worth 150 points. That means, that means it's worth 15% uh, of your course grade. So what you're going to be doing is writing about the way that a uh, particular communication experience you had is illustrated by a specific concept that we talked about in class called self-efficacy. So that's in um, chapter three. Um, I'm looking at it right now. That's on pages 61 through 63. So 61 through 63, where it says self-efficacy assessing your own abilities. We talked about this in class. Part of this concept, part of part of this whole section, the authors talk about self-efficacy, communication apprehension, and then self-fulfilling prophecy. So we talked about all these things in class. Um, so your whole paper will be uh, at least has it needs to be at least two pages, but no more than four, assuming that it's tr that you're using twelve point Times New Roman font with one inch margins and that it's double spaced. So assuming that you're using correct format, that's sort of the the guidelines. I recommend writing three pages. Um, that way, you write in the middle. If it's if it's only two, then that would imply that, it, assuming that it's a good paper, it would need to be written extremely succinctly and to the point and very um, concise. It's not like you. It's not like you have to write more. Write, writing more, a longer paper doesn't mean that it's going to be better. Everyone has a different writing style, but I recommend going for three pages, no more than four. Um, the, the responses in terms of how it's graded and how I'm assessing things, the responses, the, the, your paper should definitely reflect a careful reading and thinking about the concept. So your, the, the way you write about this indicates to me as the reader and the, the, the one grading it, it, it indicates to me how much time you spent reading through this concept and thinking about it and of course applying it to your particular life. So it's graded for the whole assignment. The, the paper's graded for content, clarity, expression, uh, spelling, grammar, et cetera. Make sure you spell check, grammar check. Um, so at minimum, address all parts of the writing guidelines. So I make this, I try to make this as easy as possible. So there's five sections and I, I list them by nom, uh, Roman numerals. So you think of the paper as, as five, five, um, it could just be five paragraphs, uh, but specifically five sections. So the first section is an introduction. So just like in any paper or a speech or anything like that, you want to have some sort of intention getter have a brief statement about why you chose this topic and then have a preview statement. That's what an introduction does. It should be a very short paragraph, a couple sentences. And then the second part is the background. So now you're going to have a detailed description about the, the context of your communication experience, including the details of what happened, who was involved, and with, when this event occurred. So what I mean by communication experience is it could be anything that like an ongoing interaction that you had with a friend, a family member, a coworker, a roommate, uh, a fellow um, teammate, if you're in sports or something like that. It could be something that happened in the past. So I just, I use the term communication experience really broadly. It can apply to really any kind of an event that you experience. So it needs to be personal, something that you personally experience. So, um, you know, maybe like a, a transition where you went from uh, high school to college, or you transferred from one college to another college, or you, you went through a, a, some sort of a process, applying for a job, interviewing for a job. I'll allow you, I'll leave that up to you to determine like what you want to write about. But, but one, one thing that some students will do is if they can't think of something to write about, start brainstorming. You just brainstorm life experiences. So you get out a pen and paper, good old fashioned like brainstorming where you draw something in the middle and you start, um, spider webbing, so to speak, out of out, off of the, the center thing. And that could be like high school, college, sports, relationships, family, vacation, right? You name it. It can, it can really, as long as it's appropriate and that it applies to the assignment, you can write about almost anything that, that's, that you're willing to share about. So um, in that background, you're just, you're not, you're not applying the, the you're not applying self-efficacy to this experience. You're just giving us a background, like the reader, you're telling the, the reader, like, Here's what happened, who, here's who's involved, and this is when the event occurred. So this is only a third to a half a page. So detail, but you're not writing, you know, you're not writing pages of information, one third to one one half page roughly. And then the second part, um, I'm sorry, the part three is where you write about the concept. The concept is self-efficacy. So for this section, you will use your textbook as the primary source from where you got the information. Like I said, it's it's 
about two and a half pages of text talking about uh, where the authors talk about self-advocacy, communication apprehension, and self-fulfilling prophecy. We talked about these in class. So your goal is to demonstrate that you fully understand this concept by explaining it in your own words and providing relevant examples to, to illustrate these. Not yet personal, right? You're not yet applying this to your experience. You're just you're just writing about this, basically explaining it in your own words. And you could you could apply it to like a TV show or a movie or a, a book or something that you read, or make up hypothetical examples. While when explaining these these different concepts or these different terms. You might you know have the, the explanation and say for example when a person and so on and so forth right so this is your own work come up with a detailed like like a one page explanation detailed explanation of of self-advocacy in your own words um so you know, that requires you to read through the section multiple times i would that's what i recommend like read through the section multiple times take notes in it and then and then when you're ready you know you're you're writing a page uh, one a, a detailed one page explanation of it and then finally, part four is the application. This is the, this is the part that holds the greatest, port, uh, greatest importance. It's kind of like the whole, um, one of the main reasons you're doing this is to demonstrate that you understand how, like, how a course concept is specifically related to something that you've experienced in your life. And that's like knowledge, right? Experiencing knowledge from this course. So this holds the greatest importance. Um, so in terms of the, the flow of the paper, right? You, you've given a description of what happened, or you give the context to the reader, like here's what happened, okay. Now I, I fully explained self-efficacy. All right, now I'm gonna apply the concept to my personal experience. So you'll specifically explain how this concept illustrates your experience. You're gonna be talking about all three, like I said, self-efficacy, communication apprehension, and self-fulfilling prophecy. So how, how do those three things specifically relate to the specific experience that, you, that you're writing about? Maybe it's like, like the job interview or, or getting your first job or something like that or a relationship. So provide specific and detailed examples in your analysis, and then that, that third part uh, letter C there I say why was it useful to analyze your experience in terms of self-efficacy so it's almost like you're providing a, um, almost like an argument for why like of, of all like the experiences that you could have written about you chose this particular one but like why why is that useful like how does that make sense to to use self-efficacy to, to illustrate and analyze that particular life experience and for that what I, uh, for that there's really no like one exact correct uh, explanation or definition this is where you allow um this is where you're like your voice is showing up in the paper so as long as i see that you made an effort to address that like why do you, explain why you think self-efficacy is, is a useful way to look at that experience and then the conclusion it's a shorter one the conclusion is like one of the shortest parts of, of the paper like they one third to one half of a page at the most but but make sure you provide a summary by reviewing and uh, uh, synthesizing your experience as it relates to self efficacy. Don't just be, don't just repeat, don't just rewrite everything that you included, but synthesize, uh, comment on the general insights that you've gained, um, provide some discussion or commentary on the degree to which this writing experience helped you um, perceive of a particular life experience. So we talk about perception in class a lot. So like. How did writing about this change the way that you made sense of this particular experience, or how how has it um, changed the way that you made sense of the relationship uh, of the experience? So this has to be submitted as a Word or a PDF document. Do not please do not submit anything like Pages or Google Docs or anything else. Um, there's a if you do there's a there's a um, historically when when students submit things that are not Word or PDF. Uh, historically, oftentimes I'm not able to grade them. I'm not able to get access to them and problems happen. And if that's the case and then I'm, and I'm grading and it's not submitted on time, then it gets to, to be a zero. So make sure you follow instructions. Make sure you utilize Canvas correctly. I have the guidelines there for the deadline. Deadline is Sunday, March 3rd, no later than 11.59 p.m. Like we have a late work policy. So if you can't get it in by that day, you have 24 hours to get it in for a late submission. Um, yeah, make sure you you do it correctly because then it's 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 checked through Turnitin. On that page two, there I have a an example of how the the the, um, the format should look, where you have a, a title. Give give your paper a title. It's not like that important. If you if you really can't think of a title, uh, just write application paper. You know, but maybe maybe you think of a title. W wait until you're finished writing the paper until trying to come up with a title. That's what I recommend, and then have your name at the top with H comma 100, um, but, but specifically this is 12 point times Roman font with one inch margins, that's double space. Make sure it's a line left 
the um, margins are, are a line left. I mean, content is set to a line left as opposed to a line right, or justify. Justify is when it's in the middle. It just kind of looks weird. Um, these are the, in many cases, the default settings for a lot of Microsoft Word processing software programs. But everyone has a different program, so I'm letting you know how to, how you should do it correctly. So I have the expectations for your paper there. I, I list twelve. Um, I'm not going to read through all of them. I recommend that you read through them. I'm just going to highlight uh, number 10 there. I say, avoid direct quotes from the textbook. The goal is to explain things in your own words. So if I see that you're just copying and pasting word for word things out of the textbook, that isn't, absolutely does not demonstrate that you understand it. You just have the ability to copy and paste and anybody can really do that. So make sure you, you work on explaining things from your own perspective. Um, and then that, la that last one, number 12, that, that the writing assignment you spent under your name in Canvas has to be your own original work. So please be sure to, to follow uh, Cal State Fullerton's academic integrity policy. Any assignment, any writing assignment that I see that's suspected of any form of plagiarism or cheating or the use of artificial intelligence technology will undergo the appropriate chain of command, which is outlined in your student code of contact as a, as a university student here at Cal State Fullerton. Um, that's what I do. I, I follow the chain of command that's outlined in the student code of contact and the, uh, the academic degree committee, all that kind of stuff. And I obviously explain this in detail in class during the first week. Um, so that's those are the details of the paper. One thing that will really help you, like I said, is is first come up with your writing, your your communication experience. Like, what do you want to write about? A, a lot of students tend to get stumped on this. Like, I don't know what to write about, but brainstorm taken out, they, they just sit and they're like, oh, I can't think of anything. It's, it's sometimes very difficult to think of something by just sitting there without doing anything. So when you take a pen and paper, you're actually doing something. And it's sort of like in my experience and my experience of working with students, when you take that pen and paper, it sort of acts as a sort of a, like a catalytic effect to where it like starts extrapolating ideas and memories from your brain. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I have all this stuff I can write about. And then choose something that's interesting and relevant uh, to write about as it relates to this assignment. And then of course, the other thing that you can do to, to prepare is just re review the entire chapter three to, to get a, to refresh your ideas, to refresh your memory about um, the way we perceive ourselves, how we understand ourselves, and then specifically zone in or hone into like that section on on self advocacy. Like read it, reread it, take notes on it, um, and then just make an outline. You know, like I make it, I make it very easy. Follow follow this to a T. I, I try to make it as easy as possible where you. You follow this format, follow this structure, make sure you submit it on time, start out with an outline, don't submit a first draft, do a lot of proofreading, print out. If you, um, once you have a draft, let's say your draft one, your, your first draft of the uh, assignment, a really good way to proofread is to print it out, print it out, have an actual hard copy, and then and then look through it, get a, get a pen, a highlight or whatever, look through it check for not just not just like grammatical errors or spelling or punctuation errors but just like content look for ideas you know you kind of kind of take a step back and you're looking at your paper in a different way than you do on a computer screen so it's in my experience it's helpful to actually have the, the hard copy look at everything and you might realize like oh i kind of i already kind of said the same thing in, in this page as i did in that page um or i'm kind of being redundant here or it makes sense to sort of rearrange things. So I'm that that's the advice to that I'm giving you to write like a really good paper. I have a lot of I have a lot of resources on our Canvas page about writing and just college related stuff. So if you're if you're stumped with writing, look through those. Of course you can make an appointment with a, a tutor at the writing center at Cal State Fullerton. So um, I give you all this information because writing a paper can be can be challenging, but it's a really good way to demonstrate what you understand and this assignment is worth a large chunk of your of your course grade. So um, feel free to ask me questions in class, because if you have a question, if you're working on this, you have a question, um, ask it in class, because if, if you ask it in class, in all likelihood, someone else in class will probably benefit from, from whatever it is that you ask that we talk about. Okay, that's about it. Hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. Bye.